All right, so welcome back to the channel guys. I know it's been a really 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 long time and I'm sorry as per usual, but you know life got in the way in uh, many different ways and uh, Yeah, it's mostly positive stuff though. So I've been really busy and Nothing to complain about really. I just haven't had time to make YouTube videos basically and uh, I was actually supposed to be in Gotland Visby uh, this week, but uh, as you can probably hear on my voice, I got sick the day we were supposed to leave, so instead I've been home with a fever and stuff. It's not Corona though, so don't worry. I don't know why you would be worried about that, but yeah. Anyways, I'm here now and I'm feeling a lot better, so I thought what better way to spend like a super sunny summer day inside making an editing tutorial. So that's what we're gonna do today. So last night I uploaded a photo of my friend Joel. We were in uh, Vemdalen last week. It's like part of northern Sweden. And I grabbed a picture of him by the river uh, on the way to a waterfall. And it's like a really green, moody, dark edit. And uh, I uploaded the before and after to my Instagram story. And I actually got a lot of requests to make a tutorial on how I made that picture. Uh, or how I edited the picture. So um, I figured, let's do it. One thing I want you to know though is that this is just my way of doing it. I'm not saying that it's the perfect way or the, the right way and it might not work every time. I know that for a fact. Uh, so you're just going to basically see my editing process and how I go about editing pictures and hopefully you can learn a thing or two and if not you can just drink a cup of coffee and enjoy my terrible uh, voice for a few minutes. But yeah I'm not going to talk so much more or well I am going to talk quite a lot but not uh, here. Um, let's fire up Lightroom and uh, get on the computer. Alright, so here we are inside Lightroom guys and I have the four pictures that I've selected for this tutorial that we're gonna edit and it's uh, three like green pictures so we're gonna get like the green moody look and then I also included this one some for some like variety. Uh, it's of my friend Laura and it's uh, a bit more of like a bohemian feel, bohemish, I don't know. Um, so we're gonna edit that one as well. Uh, but we're gonna start with this one of my friend Ewell from last week. Let's get started. So the first thing I do when I get into the picture is to uh, crop it. And if you want uh, the standing Instagram picture, you're gonna choose this 4, 5, 8, 10. And then you press XX on your keyboard and it's gonna make it uh, a little bit smaller. So that's just a little bit of a tip. And the thing is, these guys are here in the frame and in the final edit I actually photoshopped them out. But I'm not going to do any photoshop in this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to actually probably record a second tutorial where I, where I do all the photoshop stuff. But uh, yeah, when I'm finished with that one I'm going to put it in the description. Uh, I used to be really scared of it but I still don't understand the program that much at all. But I at least know how to go in and remove stuff. So. Even if you're feeling like, ooh, about Photoshop, you might want to check that out whenever that's finished. But yeah, we're going to crop it and I kind of want him in the center, but also I want this little thing behind to be in the center as well. So it can like draw into the picture. Uh, so we're going to do like a little bit of, of both and uh, drag it maybe there. So like this little thing in the back is in the center and you will is almost in the center. And I actually want to crop out this white stuff here because I don't like it at all. It's like overexposed and stuff. So I'm going to drag it down to probably about there. No, actually, I'm going to make it a lot bigger. Like I explained before, uh, there's a lot of like back and forth. I don't know exactly how to crop this image when I go into it. I don't know exactly how to, to get the green and moody look. But I know the steps that I take to achieve the, the final result basically. So... That's what you're gonna learn. So let's start off with something like that. And um, the first thing I do after that is I go into the tone curve. And basically, if you're new to the tone curve, the bottom part affects the shadows, the top part affects the highlights, and the middle is like the mid tones. Um, so the thing that you usually wanna do is to get one point down here to start getting some contrast in the picture. Uh, so just drag it down to get more contrast 
and then put another point up here to get some like highlights so maybe drag it up somewhere there uh, and then if you want to add that little bit of like a faded look you want to drag it up in the bottom a little bit so somewhere there and higher up the midtones a little bit and the thing is like what's hard for me at least is like when you change stuff other things might start looking like shit but that's gonna be fixed later on so you just have to look at like the tone of the picture now like how the exposure is looking how the how the vibe is starting to get so we're gonna hire this a little bit and I think we're gonna start off somewhere around here before and after not a big change but a little bit of contrast and I don't want to put too much contrast here because we're gonna do something crazy in just a minute here that's gonna add a lot of contrast as well so I'm actually even gonna go up here and maybe reduce the contrast a little bit to like minus 10 and uh, then we're gonna go back to the tone curve and we're gonna choose the separate channels and I'm not even gonna try to explain this because I don't even understand it myself I just saw it in a tutorial but if you drag these down just a little bit and then this up a little bit and then you do the same for every single one that's gonna add like it's gonna add pop to the colors it's like it's like adding saturation but in a way more like subtle way basically uh, because if you slide the saturation slider I feel like it kind of gets out of hand pretty quickly down and then we might try add a little bit of fade to these as well okay so we're gonna start off right there that's how it looks after the tone curves and now I'm gonna go back to the the normal tone curve and adjust that again so somewhere there that's good before and after now we're gonna go to the next step and like after I've done this I usually do the things that I know I'm gonna do later anyways to just get it over with which is go into detail and when you're in detail here is basically the sharpening and you want to press alt and you want to drag the masking and basically what you see everything that's white on the screen is what it's sharpening but we don't want to sharpen all this stuff we just want UL and like some main lines to be sharpened so we're gonna drag it all the way down here so that it's only targeting basically like UL and, and some other sharp lines here because if it's like plottery on the screen and it's like sharpening everywhere then it's gonna be hard for the eye to focus where to look drag the masking up and then we're gonna sharpen it at around like 60 and you can like you can't even see the difference but it's there trust me that's done lens corrections remove chromatic aberrations profile corrections already checked uh, effects I'm gonna add a little bit of vignette because I always do that and the vignette is good you don't want the eye to want to focus on too much things so if you add a little bit vignette on the sides it's going to be easier for the eye to look straight to the middle of the picture where you will is to not get distracted by small shit everywhere you know these things are done now we're going to go into uh, some adjustments and um, this is the brush tool you basically brush and uh, then you get to change the things that you brushed and if you press down here you can see exactly what things you targeted so uh, we're gonna remove that one and we're gonna brush on this river here because I want to make it more like blue and uh, and nice because right now it's kind of kind of yellow and not looking so good so we're gonna drag down the temperature on the river right there bam and I'm also gonna decrease the saturation because I wanted to remove this yellow part here you can see the, the yellow on the rocks i am just remove that so now we targeted the river and basically all the adjustments that we make here is only gonna target that so we're gonna drag down the temperature all the way down so we get this blue nice river here and play around with these sliders a little bit some clarity clarity can stay where it is maybe drag it up a little bit like 10 dehaze no 
See this, like, uh, when I have something targeted, I always, like, slide around with these to see what happens and uh, see if there's something that I like. But I think I'm pretty happy with how the water looks now. Maybe some exposure? No, no. Let's leave it like that for now and uh, start working on other things. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a graduated filter. See the thing I talked about before with the distractions? This to the right here, the bright part, is very distracting and it's leading your eye into it even if you don't think about it. So we're gonna drag this one and this is basically a thing so that it starts from down here and works towards the middle and uh, same with the, with a brush except that now it's like a big gradient from the side and we're going to decrease the exposure from that side so Already now the picture is it's a lot less distracting from that side and a world of difference just doing that, you know, like this and this. You get straight, yeah, like your eye goes straight to you well and uh, that's what we want. We can add another one down here actually, maybe something like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into split toning. And I don't always use split tonings, but I do sometimes. Basically, this is like the tone of the shadows and the highlights. So I usually try to get like the warm shadows, maybe like so. This can go overboard really quickly, so you gotta chill with these. Maybe put it on four, and then the blue highlights, maybe. Yeah. Because you see the highlights of this picture is basically only Jewel's face and the water. So that's just going to make it a little extra blue, you know. So if we put like maybe five on the highlights. So we get like a little bit more of a warm look in these. And we get uh, the more blue look in the water. Actually, I don't like what that did to the greens, the shadows. So we're just going to remove the shadows, I think. Maybe make the shadows green. Let's try to have the green shadows. That looks nice. We can go back and change it later if we don't like it, so it's no problem. Next part is we're gonna go into HSL color, and here we have the hue, saturation, and luminance of each and every color. And uh, the moody green, usually what you wanna do is to reduce the luminance a little bit of the greens, and also reduce the saturation of the greens. So somewhere like that. And that made a big change, just that. Usually when I was beginning, I was ending up with something like this and the greens were like all over the place. But you just gotta have the courage to just drag down the saturation of the greens uh, to make them a bit more moody. And the luminance as well to like minus 40. And do we want to change the tone of them? Maybe slightly to over there. And like... We've done small things all the time now, but this is the before and after, so we're getting we're getting there, guys. It's really good. Now I think that this part is a little bit bright, but I still want it to feel like it's shining down from there. So I'm going to use another filter, and we're going to drag a circle here. And now if I change stuff, it's going to change everything outside of that filter. So you want to press invert, so it's just going to affect what's inside instead. I think lower the exposure a little bit, and then maybe add a graduated filter up here as well and darken it a little bit or no you know what let's paint it up with the brush again big brush let's paint this a little bit like so and reduce the saturation or no the exposure i think that looks good uh, now we're gonna add another one of these and now we want it to affect everything that's outside so now we're not going to press invert, because now I want to lower the exposure just a little bit of everything that's not you well. So basically now we're lowering the exposure of everything that's not outside of him. Drag it down to like minus 20 and also reduce the clarity of everything that's around him. So that's going to also like declutter it a little bit and make it feel like he's more in focus. Let's also play with the yellows because the yellows always affect the greens as well, as you can see. So if we desaturate the yellows a little bit as well, we're going to get some changes like that. So that's the before and after. And now as a final touch, I think we're going to go back to the tone curve and see if we can make some improvements. Because now we have everything we want laid out, except for a little bit of brushing here. Bam, bam, bam. Like so. See if we can improve something. A bit more fade maybe, some deeper shadows, no, I kind of like it. 
I actually think this looks pretty good. Like I said before, in, in the final edit, I actually went into Photoshop and removed these guys and added some bushes here, and that obviously helped a lot as well. All right, so the next picture we're gonna tackle is this one that I uploaded a few days ago, and it's from the same spot. Like, the last picture was on the way up to this waterfall, basically. And uh, my friend insisted to run into the waterfall, and I was like, no, dude, it's dangerous, but he uh, insisted so i was like yeah if you're gonna go in there at least put on my jacket so we can have like a decent picture i don't like the framing at all of this picture it's like i didn't want to be like a pain in the ass for my friends and st stick around and take photos forever and it was like a big line of people and it's like water splashing everywhere so i just snapped some shots and we were out of there first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, crop it again uh, to the four times five format for standing Instagram. Obviously in this picture we want to have the waterfall in the center somewhere over there maybe. Also bring in a little piece of this from the top and also the pool down here and we can have my friend on like the, the bottom rule of thirds here. And this picture is kind of tricky because it's a bit like it's not super sharp and uh, we have all these little pointy things everywhere that's going to distract you. Again, it's, it's all about the distractions. So the first thing we're going to do, just like last time after the cropping, we're going to the tone curve. We're going to drag down the shadows, push up the highlights. The highlights in this picture is going to be the waterfall mostly. So just uh, increase the highlights a little bit and to get rid of all these little like all the hard edges it can be really helpful to actually add some fade. So we're gonna add some fade to this picture right here and try this down somewhere here. Yeah, uh, I think this is about good for now. We're gonna go up to basic, reduce the contrast a little bit. As you guessed it, we're gonna jump into this crazy stuff with um, separate uh, channels here. You see this like saturation added, but in a different way. That's why I like to do that. So we're gonna also go and decrease the saturation over here, minus 10 maybe. So this is the before and after right now. I'm not like liking what I'm seeing now, but we're just gonna have to go through the steps and turn some more knobs and see what we end up with. Go down to the things that I always do. Mask sharpening, boom. Uh, increase sharpening to 40, 50 maybe. Take the brush. We don't want this yellow waterfall we want the blue clean and nice waterfall like so reduce the temperature and reduce the saturation you see just by changing the waterfall you get a really different vibe from the picture now we're gonna go into hsl I'm gonna play around with these maybe lower the blue a little bit but higher the luminance of the blue that's gonna give more pop to the water itself and oh i forgot let's go back to this brush let's see if we reduce the clarity in the water yeah that's gonna take the focus a little bit off it you see it's very sharp now we want it to be maybe a little bit softer so maybe minus 70. we're definitely gonna add a graduated filter down here reduce the exposure also maybe saturation no actually let's not do that let's do it like this let's brush a little bit down here on this and reduce the saturation to get rid of this distracting yellow thing here like that, looking good. Uh, we're gonna do like this, take him. Everything outside of him is gonna be affected, like we talked about. So we're gonna drag down the clarity of everything to like minus 10. So now we've like added fade and we've reduced the clarity of everything outside to make it easier on the eyes with these hard edges everywhere. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a good thing to do. All right, HSL. Or no, actually, let's do split toning first. Let's see how it looks with some warm shadows. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I actually like the hard, uh, hard. I don't know how the. I can't remember how the edit on Instagram looks, but in this one, I actually like the, the hardness of it. So maybe try some blue highlights. Yeah, that looks good. Let's go with that. HSL. Uh, what we got going on here is greens. We got the blues in the waterfall. Oh, did we miss a spot up here? I see yellow. Let's get some extra, extra stuff up there. 
Yeah, we got the greens, we got the yellows on the jacket, we got the blues in the water and on the stones and stuff. And we got a little bit of oranges and also the yellows in the greens. We're gonna hit the greens and see what happens if we do like this. I actually like it when they're a bit bright, I think, but we're gonna decrease the saturation somewhere there maybe. So they're like deep greens, but they're like fairly saturated. But since the picture is so faded overall, they're not gonna take over. Uh, the greens, do we wanna change this? Maybe a little bit. What else? The yellows. Actually, let's increase it. So the HSL. Fairly small changes, to be honest. But as a final touch, we're going to go in with some light from the top. Yeah. Because that kind of creates more dynamic uh, in the shot. And now I think we can go even further with this one, because now we have a counterpart. Uh, so now we have the light coming in from here. The physics of it doesn't match, I guess, but it's really nice to have like light coming in and then like a dark side and a bright side. Uh, so to create a more dynamic picture. And let's hit these greens a little bit. And let's see what happens if we add some warmth to them. It's very subtle, but I kind of like it. It's like the sun is hitting it. What happens if we even add warmth to the sunlight? It's probably gonna look bad, but let's try. Hmm, no. That actually looks pretty good. I think that's a finished one, guys. What do you think? Oh, let's add some uh, crop as well. So that's the before and after. Pretty good, I think. So another green moody picture. Maybe it's a little bit dark here in the corner, but yeah, you know, you gotta... I think we're gonna go with this one now for some variety. But yeah, this is my friend, uh, Laura with her dog. I think it's a beautiful picture. I rented out like a 85 millimeter 1.4 and I just love the composition and with a house in the background and this field. This field looked like shit in reality to be honest, but since it's so blurred out, you can't even see it. The only thing I don't like is the overexposed sky, but I mean, what can you do? You can't get it all. And for this one, I think I want to have like a bright, uh, I want to make it brighter and very like earthy vibes, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to start by, um, uh, cropping it like I just did without even thinking about it and uh, jump into the tone curve. What we're gonna do here, gonna have these points and we're actually gonna drag up the shadows a little bit and the mid-tones and the highlights and that way we're increasing the exposure of the whole picture. So instead of dragging down to get these shadows, gonna drag it up to get a more soft look but I think we still want some fade though. Add just a little bit of fade like so before and after the curves somewhere there is good and let's try if we want to do this here like i always try this i should probably make a preset for it because it takes ages but sometimes it looks good and sometimes it doesn't look good at all split toning here it could work with some warm shadows yeah highlights blue yep uh, HSL, now we're gonna add luminance to the oranges to make them brighter, the yellows as well maybe, yep, reduce the saturation, increase the oranges to get her skin a little bit before and after, maybe see if we change the hue, let's do like this, let's make it bigger so it hits both of them, and reduce the clarity outside of that, also reduce the exposure outside of them, so we get more focus on them the forehead with some reduced exposure because it's a bit uh, overexposed and you can see the chromatic aberration there as well so let's go into lens corrections remove chromatic aberration didn't work hopefully no one notices all right let's see if we can change the greens in here I actually like them when they're desaturated and also I want to see if we can change the saturation on this one yeah remove that yeah, I think I'm pretty much happy with that. We have like a bright, dreamy vibe going on. And I guess you could sit here for a little while longer and make more changes. But I'm pretty much liking this. And we're going to jump to the next picture, which is going to be the last one. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crop it as per usual. As you can see, this picture is very hazy uh, because there's water coming down and it's misty and my lens is like smushed with water. The way to solve that problem is to dehaze. So we're gonna dehaze a little bit, go into the tone curves, and you guessed it, we're gonna drag down this 
Um, do we want to add some highlights? I don't know. Yeah, we do. A little bit. Drag that down. That's what we got right now. I'm going to reduce the saturation by minus 20 because it's very much color in these greens here and especially these. We're actually going to hit these with the brush right away. Reduce both the exposure and the saturation of those greens so they don't steal your attention. As you can see, it's a huge difference. This is before, this is after. Now we're going to add standard stuff. Reduce the masking, sharpening, 50, add a vignette, split toning. I think blue shadows could be nice here. Let's do it. And warm highlights. No, never mind. Let's go like that, standard. And HSL, we're going to play around with the luminance. Let's reduce the luminance of the greens. Keep some saturation though. We're gonna hit this with some reduced exposure and some dehaze but the other way around so we're going to add a little bit of mist but at the same time reduce the exposure a little bit so i mean there's there's not really a good way to solve this shit up here if you don't mind my french uh, reduce the clarity also to make it less like to make it more mushy now we're going to take the brush big size gonna brush here here, 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 and we're going to do some extra dehazing, I think, to remove a bit of the mist here. Mm-hmm, yep, that's the before and after right now. I think we want to reduce the exposure of the rock a little bit to lead more attention to Paulina. And then maybe we want to do one of these where we reduce the clarity of everything outside her. Do we want to do that? Yeah, I think so. At least like minus six. I think that's good. Go back to the RGB. Do we want to fade or not? It's barely visible. Let's remove the fade from these and see what we get. Yeah, I think I like that better. There was a lot of fade going on. Let's add a graduated filter here. Reduce the exposure a little bit of that stuff. I think I'm happy with this. I don't know, what do you guys think? Maybe we can try to add some uh, warmth to these like we did in the last waterfall. See what happens. Nah, I like them when they're more green here, to be honest. Yeah, I think it looks good, especially when you look up here. It looks like a very appealing picture. And it's very mushy, of course, like I said, because of the lens. It's like you can see the water splashes if you really zoom in. Let's do this. Yeah. That's good. That's what was missing. Some blue waterfalls. All right, so that's the end of this tutorial, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And like I mentioned before, this is just my editing process and there's no right or wrong way. It's just about knowing a little bit beforehand and then after that, just playing around with all the different uh, sliders and stuff. Also, I don't know how long this video is gonna be. It, by the looks of my screen recordings, it's gonna be pretty damn long. Uh, but I've heard from you guys in the past that you like the way that I teach, even though I feel like I'm just rambling. Uh, but uh, please comment down below what you think about it, if you think it was way too long or if it was good or... Yeah, just put a comment what you think and I will read it and uh, act accordingly. And uh, apart from that, just have a beautiful day, like the video and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!